Greetings, Bat Family, and welcome back to Holy Batcast, brought to you, as always, by real fans for real movies. Make sure you visit holybatcast.com or find us on social media, Holy Batcast, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. If you love the show, you want to help support it, you can do that on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash holybatcast. And as always, a big old thank you to you guys who have done that. You are awesome, and we love you. Uh, we're part of the Real Fans Podcast Network, so if you were looking for other shows to enjoy, you can check those out at rf4rm.com. And as always, I'm Andy DiGenova. You can follow me on Twitter or on Instagram. It's just my name, Andy DiGenova. Uh, now, this episode, we are going to be talking news, a little bit of news, not tons of news, because uh, they're holding back all the big news for DC Fandom, which is about a week and a half away. So that's really what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about everything that we hope to see, we think we'll see at DC Fandom coming up next week. And then uh, we are going to review, what, another episode of Batman Beyond? Yeah. Yeah. We're back in it, guys. So we're going to do that, too. Um, Because he sat out last time, he's back this time. And that is my good pal, Jamie Drewley. Welcome back, Jamie. Happy spooky season, everybody. I know, right? It's it's wonderful, and it's magical, and it's lovely. And as we were talking about before I hit record, it is so damn busy. It's it's insane, but in the right ways, I guess. It's all, yeah, it's all fun. It's good busy. You know, I, I really enjoy it, but I mean, you guys are doing your scare and you know, milks is, I think, is at like 1076 or something? You're, no, you're... he's not. He's, he's literally at like, I think right now, the last one I saw him checking at was 127 and I'm on 89. Okay. So still, still, and I'm just, I guess what I'm at, I'm at 20, 20. Well, you got a late start and you were kind of busy. The rest I, of us don't have lives and you are shifting yours in all kinds of different directions right now. So, well, that, no, that no is words. very true. Very true. And, I just, and like, it's not like there's a Sizzler gift card at stake here. It's just something we do for fun. So. Although I, I will still take a Sizzler gift card. I mean, who wouldn't? Not that I could use it anywhere near me, but, you know, just the, the idea of having one would, would be pretty amazing. <laughs> I don't even know if, the, I don't think there's a Sizzler over here. Uh, But I'd have to look. There might be. Um, I mean, I guess I can say it now. Like, you know, I mean, I'd been talking over the the previous couple episodes about the irregularity of recording because of moving and buying a house and now moving into the house. And then there was another piece that was not public until last week. We are also having a baby. So, yeah. So, I mean... If all of those other things aren't enough, new job, new house, you know, move across the country, get married. If all of that wasn't enough, now we've got a baby on the way. So <laughs> it's uh, we're just doing all of the things in one year, just checking all the boxes all at once, because why wait? Really? You you are taking adulting to the next level right now. OK, you know, it, it, it's true. It's we're overachievers. It's just a lot. <laughs> it's a, we you've lived like a little kid for like 40 years. And now you just decided all at once. Ah, let's just do it. Yep. Pretty much. Uh, I, we found out we were pregnant five days after our wedding. So, see, I mean, I've, no time to waste. I know. James, no James time. James Bond wasted. has no time to die. You have no time to, to waste. It's, it's accurate. I ain't getting any younger. So anyway, you know, that, the, that is the, exciting. The, his friends have, have, you know, been you know, excited about this news for, you know, just a little bit. Uh, you know, we're, we're helping name the baby. We're helping dress the baby. We're helping <laughs> raise the baby. I mean, we're, we're throwing everything at him. And Andy's just got this whole, yeah, cool. And you can just tell he's given me the finger. You know, we don't do video chat stuff. It's all audio and text. So I can just see every time I say something to him, he's like, yeah, enough. I get it. So. No, I, I'm, I, I appreciate it. Uh, it's just <laughs> the, the point was everybody's going to throw congratulations. Please, no more name suggestions. I named the baby. It's set. We're good. Well, so. some good friends of ours at work, they decided the baby is going to be named Batman, Batman D. Genova, which I'm OK with. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what the birth certificate said. I wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised at all. It's in the running. Let's just say that <laughs> it hasn't been eliminated from the options. Listen, I went when my son was born. My wife was, you know, on the bed getting ready to deliver. She was in labor. I was like, "Can we please name this kid Bruce Wayne Drooly?" And she just gave me that eye of, "You're not serious right now." I was like, "All right, 
Of course, I always told her that if the, if the twins were boys and gr- a boy and a girl, I was going to name them Luke and Leia, and there was nothing she could do to stop me. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? Yep. I mean, Bruce Wayne DiGenova is also been, it's been mentioned. It's been bandied about. Shocked, know? I say. Shocked. I, I know. I'm, I, I'm sure. <laughs> so, I mean, not that we know the sex. We have, we have options for male and female. So, um, you know, don't just assume, but well, I mean, we know the sex, but we have not revealed that yet. Just yet. Listen, We're, Elliot took off as a girl's name about 20 years ago. So why not Bruce for a girl's name too? I'm why just not? Saying, you know what? It's re- 2021. You're not bound by these gender standards. Yeah, it's true. Well, and that's where people have been saying like, oh, uh, you know, are, are you, you should reveal the gender before the shower because otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of gender neutral stuff. And we're like, yeah, we want a bunch of gender neutral stuff. But my wife and I were very old fashioned when we had both of, you know, we had our twins and then three years later we had our son. We did not want to know the sex of the babies until they were born. Wow, Period. that is old fashioned. So we, we, we just went with it. And of course, I don't know if I've ever told this story publicly, but <clears throat> our plan was always we were going to have one of each, a boy and a girl, or we were going to stop at three. So right off the bat, I've got two girls. <laughs> and my wife's in labor, and she actually had a little tougher time with my son than she did with the twins as far as the labor's concerned. She didn't do any kind of epidurals or anything. She did natural childbirth with all the kids. But, you know, my son was bigger. You know, the twins there was more to push out, but it wasn't like one big mass, you know, two smaller things. Mm -hmm. My son, he was, he was a big kid. So, you know, it was a little tougher on her and she's sitting there having these contractions and, you know, clutching my hand and everything else. And smart me with my perfect timing. Listen to this. I say, listen, I know we said we were going to stop at three, but if this is a girl, can we try one more time? Oh my God. (laughs) I swear to you, she almost broke my hand when I did that. I, I wouldn't blame her at that point. I, I was not in a good mental state right there. You know, I was, um, I, I always get concerned when my wife's in a hospital bed for any reason, you know? It's yeah. One of those things. But anyway, I digress. Well, there you go. Cats out of the bag or bats out of the bag, if you will. Uh, but either one's appropriate this time of year. True. True. It is. It's bats, cats, pumpkins, etc. cetera. Um, but you want to talk about some DC stuff? Yeah, let's, why not? Let's start with I guess bats. that's why we're here. We're not here to talk about life. We're here to talk about fake life. I know. I mean, it's it's such a thing. I feel like I feel like half the people who listen to the show like appreciate the little glimpse into our lives. And for those people, thank you for bearing with us. And for the Everybody other people, else is they're fast forwarding like shut yes, up. Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure there are just as many people be like, I don't care. I want. To, I'm here to talk about Batman. Shut up. You're having a kid. Great. <laughs> um, so anyway, let's talk about Batman. Let's. Here's the first little tidbit. It's not uh, groundbreaking, but it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to hear a uh, little uh, thing where Ben Affleck, he went to the premiere of The Tender Bar and Variety asked him about returning to the role of Batman in The Flash. And so here's a Ben. Did. What was that? I said, of course they did. Nobody ever wants to talk to him about what they're supposed to talk to him about. Everybody wants to talk about Batman. I mean, if, if I met Ben Affleck, I would make it a point to talk to him about Armageddon. Just, if I met Ben Affleck, I would have as much time as I could possibly muster asking questions about Jennifer Garner, but that's a whole nother story. Oh, oh okay, great. Uh, I would ask him about what he had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so they asked him about Batman, of course, uh, and here's what he said. He said, it was a really nice way to revisit that as the prior experience had been difficult. This was really lovely, really fun. I had a great time. I'm probably under some gag order that I'm not even aware of that I probably just violated, and now I'm going to be sued. That Um, sounds like Ben. Yeah, it it totally sounds like him. I can hear it in his voice. Uh, And then he did say, I love Ezra, and I had a chance to see Jason, who's over there making Aquaman 2. So that's a fun little little bit of a Justice League family reunion over there. So anyway, nothing revealing, of course. I don't think he's going to get sued. I think he's going to be fine. But... Nice to hear that his experience on The Flash was really lovely, as he says, and nice that he got to catch up with Ezra Miller and Jason Momoa. I think that's super cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you got to figure, even though it might have been stressful circumstances, they probably enjoyed each other's company for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the cast as a whole got along great. You know, it wasn't that. Yeah, it was all more 
you know, the other stuff. It never seemed to be issues with one another at all. Yeah. So uh, nice. Thanks for, for a second, though, when he said when he said, you know, it was great seeing Ezra and Jason. I was like, oh, Jason Momoa, is he in, is he in the Flash, too? We're going to get an Aquaman cameo. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. I, it, it, it is not out of the realm of possibility, especially if they're close enough that they were able to get together. If they're shooting in close enough proximity, I would not put it past them. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm honestly not going to be surprised if you get any kind of a cameo or a snippet from anyone. Yeah. Gal, yeah. Uh, Henry, and you know, any of them. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised with any of them. I also wouldn't be surprised if none of them were in it, except for the ones we know about, so... Time will tell. I've, I've almost given up trying to guess and speculate on this stuff because I'm never even close to right. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so anyway, very but cool. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that he had a good time with this. Yeah, And I, I, I don't want to read too much into it and think, well, there's hope that he might turn back in now if he had a good time doing this. And he'll think to himself, you know what? It really wasn't so bad that, you know, the first experience was kind of rough. This one was good. Maybe I'll think about doing it again. I'm not, I'm not going down that road, although I'm sure the conversation's already been had on Twitter or yeah. wherever else. But, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy for him that he's in a good place and enjoying life. And, you know, he had fun at his job i mean if you can't have fun at your job it makes your job that much harder so yeah for sure so that was very cool just nice to hear it um another thing that you know is nice to hear for everybody but especially you is that james gunn is developing other dc projects outside of the peacemaker good for him so I knew you would be excited. I, I wanted to hold this little nugget for you. I didn't know if you had seen it. You said you weren't keeping up with the news, but I knew that this would be the highlight of your day. Um, so yeah, on Instagram, someone asked him if he was developing another DC project. He said, yes. They said, just Peacemaker. He goes, no, other than Peacemaker. So then, of course, a lot of speculation. What could it be? What would he be doing? Who knows? There's no info other than that. Um, but Yes, do tell. How excited are you about this? I, I'll give it its chance. I mean, it's whatever it be, be. You know, the Peacemaker series, I'll probably watch it. I won't act like I'm not going to. If I can't stand it, I'll quit early or just be done with it and say what i got to say and be just move on with my life. If I do like it, I'll give it its due credit. And whatever he puts out, whatever project he turns in, I'll give it its chance. I mean, it's... I guess the best example I can give, I really like Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I really hated Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I'm not going to act like I'm not going to watch 3. If I'm disappointed by it, so be it. But, you know, if he does another Suicide Squad, I'll watch that, give it its fair chance. If he does, a, a, you know, if he does something like a Booster Gold movie, I'm not sure I'm hip to that. But, you know, I, I do have limitations, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Excited? Not in the least. But, you know, whatever it is, I'll, I'll watch it and see what comes out. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting. Um, we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, we have Peacemaker coming. And kind of gearing up for Fandom, we got our first clip of Peacemaker. Now, I don't know if you if you caught this. I did not. Okay. So it's, a, it's about a minute clip from Peacemaker. It kind of just came out of nowhere, um, but it's fun. <laughs> I assume that was the footage that was in the trailer you told me to watch. No. You would, you would think, but you would be incorrect. Um, so yeah, this clip, it's, it's John Cena, full on Peacemaker outfit. I will say, here's one thing. I, I love that. I love how he's always wearing the Peacemaker outfit and he loves wearing it. Whether he's filming the movie or in the movie or not, he's always wearing it. And I, I appreciate that. So same thing here. You've got like a, a group of Waller's cronies. Two of them were the ones from the post credit scene of the Suicide Squad, and there's two more who I do not recognize, so I think they might be new characters. Um, or they were in the Suicide Squad and just didn't have as much dialogue, so maybe I forgot them. But they're all, like, at a diner, and Peacemaker is showing up, and he's walking in in full costume, and they, they joke about that, being like, oh my god, I can't believe he's wearing it, blah, 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 you know. Uh, is there a bald eagle in his his back seat uh and he comes in and they're like why are you wearing this costume he's like it's not a costume it's a uniform and they're like and why do you have a bald eagle in your car and he goes what that's eagly and then they do some very james gunny jokes of like oh do you have a dog named doggy do you have a daughter named daughtery uh so 
it's it's very much that same sense of humor of the Suicide Squad that you expect from James Gunn. It made me smile. It's cute. There's no action to it, but it's the return of the Peacemaker. So, yeah, we got that little tidbit this week. Still no real indication of prequel or post-Suicide Squad? It does seem post because the post credit scene is them going to get him, and then this seems like a follow-up to that where it's those same people meeting with him in a cafe. Okay. So it does feel like this is definitely that. Uh, so anyway, it's it was fine, you know. But again, I I thought it was amusing. You probably would find it less so, uh, but it's totally in line with with what we had seen in the past. Um, so yeah, we got that to lead up to DC fandom, and we're gonna see more. So I did tell you before we started recording. Oh, watch this trailer. This trailer came out today as we're recording. And it was the DC Fandom official teaser trailer and also just about a minute long, but a really jam-packed minute. A lot of, uh, in there, a lot of things that they're teasing that we are going to see at Fandom in a week and a half. I keep, I again, before we start recording, we both have the same problem. We keep thinking it's this coming weekend, and it's not. It's next weekend. And I don't know why. My brain is mush. Uh What's so yeah, funny? Like you're busy doing stuff or something. I know. What's so funny? So you and I, we we made plans to record this, and then you said, "Oh, but I'm I'm unavailable all weekend," and I was like, "Well, shit, I can't do the fandom recap if you're gone." And then I messaged Brendan. I'm like, "Jamie's out all weekend. When do you have time to do the fandom recap?" And he goes, "Mate, it's next week." And I was like, "Oh God, you're right. Never mind. Forget it. We'll talk about it next week." So yeah. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Point is. We got a trailer today. Very exciting. You watched it. Lots in there. Uh, but yeah, give me give me your thoughts overall. Uh, There's certainly some intriguing things in there. Uh, I, I'm Because this is how I try to approach things now. I'm going to get my big negative out of the way first so I can try and enjoy the rest of the conversation. Listen, this Batman movie with Pattinson and, and, and Reeves and... and Zoe and, and all these people, I mean, I really want to be excited for it, but this snippet that we saw of the uh, what's sure to be considered the first generation prior to a real Catwoman outfit, uh, yeah, I, I didn't care for that at all. Like, the guys wearing the hockey pads in the Dark Knight look like people doing cosplay of the guys doing the hockey pad thing in the Dark Knight look better than what she's wearing in this trailer. Mm. Past that, I kind of like what I saw. You know, you get a you know a quick. Everything's like a one second shot. So, yeah. You know, you get like yeah. a one second shot of, of the Rock in his Black Adam outfit, which he looks great. And you get the, you know, the one second shot of. Uh, I mean, I because it's me on a podcast, I'm going straight to the end. There's something at the 50 second mark, that I took a snapshot of my television screen and sent it to you, and I said, "What is this? What is it from?" And you didn't know, and I don't know what it's from. It's like, well, Batman the good is news blind. is, is uh, Brendan and Jay Yaws solved the problem. I just saw. Oh, did they? They okay. did. It's right, from it Fortnite. It is the Batman inclusion of Fortnite. Oh, okay. Which, as soon as they said it, I went, "Uh, that that checks out." All right. So you know that solves that problem because I couldn't make it out. It's just like Batman gliding through the air with these tattered batwing looking cape things and no sleeves on his outfit and like an animated forest beneath him and a tower with a winding stone staircase around it next to him. It, it, it was a cool shot, but it was a weird shot. So you know, I, I, I'm not a Fortnite guy, so I would have never placed that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't either uh, because I am the <laughs> same. I've never played Fortnite, but as soon as they said it, I, I see enough Fortnite stuff out there that i went oh yeah that makes sense um i'll tell you though this this trailer got me hyped this morning when it came out i was like oh man it is coming and there's there's a lot of good stuff to look forward to so uh i loved it and i love that we did get just a little bit of glimpse uh of different things so you mentioned like yeah the first i guess you would call it footage of the rock and black adam even though it's really just it's the rock from the you know, the shoulders up. So you don't really see anything, but it's him. And it looks like it's actually from the film. It doesn't look like behind the scenes footage. Um, so yeah, you see that, like you said, there's like a quick little snippet with peacemaker. Uh, and he's with vigilante. Did, did you notice that? 
No. So Vigilante, do you know the, the comic book character? No, I do not. Well, well it, is that the one that uh, 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 a comedian is based off of? I think so. I know that, he's based off of some obscure character. I thought that's not, yeah, I mean, Vigilante is relatively obscure. Um, but here he's standing next to the Peacemaker in that quick quick snippet. But what's cool is he looks right off the page. Like, the costume is, is nailed. It's perfect. So uh, I thought that was really cool. He looks exactly like he should. I always feel like he looks like a skier. <laughs> I, guess. I mean, he kind of looks like, like someone who's going skiing crossed with snake eyes from G.I. Joe. Well, now you have my attention because I like me some snake eyes. Yeah, I mean, he looks cool. Like it, the the outfit is actually really good. So that's a neat little tidbit in there. Um, yeah, again, the Fortnite thing had us all questioning. Um, one thing that jumped out at me that I thought was really cool was seeing Pierce Brosnan. Yes. You know, like a lot of the people, I mean, it's all very exciting, but it's all people you would expect, right? Like uh, Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz. And, you know, like there are a lot of people who you expect to be there because they're really doing a big push for the Batman. Um, but Pierce, Bro- and like The Rock, of course, you're going you know, to see The Rock. But it was it was Pierce Brosnan kind of made me sit up. I was like, oh, that's right. That's right. He's in Black Adam. That's awesome. So lots of like celebrities really quick snippets of them in here and yeah little bits of footage nothing too new they're saving it all of course for next saturday but still this thing i was like oh man there's like so much to look forward to uh and i can't wait you know ezra miller's in there jason momoa's in there again robert pattinson uh zachary levi was in there uh john cena was in there as well some um, of the CW people. Yeah, a lot of the, the CW folks. The, Batwoman, oh, the new Batwoman was in there, I think. Yeah. Um, Javisha Leslie. Javisha Leslie. I knew I was going to screw that up. Um, the new Supergirl was in there. Sasha Kali. Was that her? Yeah, she. it was real quick, but she's in there. Toward It was toward the end of the trailer? Yes. Was she blonde? No, she has like very, very short black hair. Okay, I guess I didn't catch that because I saw the one and I thought it was just Melissa Benoist. It's at 46 seconds. I'm just scrolling through it right now. It's right after Zachary Levi. Okay, I'll have to go back and check that out because I no longer have a TV down here because I moved my TV from down here upstairs. Yeah, so anyway, this is very cool. Again, the standouts was was the little bits of new content that we had seen. Uh, The... The really interesting thing, though, is like, you know, they're they were pushing Titans and, you know, they were pushing the Mac stuff and Peacemaker and the movies, obviously, and even some of the video games. Um, And then at the end, though, it's like and be the first to see the new trailer, the Batman. So, like, again, it seems like that really is the focus, which I guess makes sense. I guess that's the next DC film coming out. What What's the current release dates scheduled for that? (laughs) March. Okay. There's been so many, I can't quite keep them straight, but I'm pretty sure it's March. So I guess we're about due for a real trailer. Yeah, so that that would be next, right? Um, so here's here I took a, a quick little list of everything that we see in this trailer just to help us. Um, so obviously the Batman, the Flash, both the movie and the TV show, Black Adam, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Peacemaker, Superman and Lois, uh batwoman titans supergirl the tv show doom patrol and then video games i saw footage of gotham knights suicide squad and then as we just discovered fortnite so lots in that one minute packed in there but super exciting and then a couple days ago we also got a list of the different celebrities and hosts that will be a part of dc fandom are you ready it's a it's a really really long list yeah. <laughs> so, Yahya Abdul Mateen II makes sense, obviously. Which is, uh, Black uh, Black Manta. Black Manta. Um, and also Watchmen, if you want to count that, because that's DC also. Yep. JJ uh, Abrams. Oh, that's intriguing. I've all but forgotten that he was involved now. I know, uh, but again, intriguing. Uh, Melissa Benoist, uh, Matt Bomer, um, Flula Borg, Mikad Brooks, P. 
Pierce Brosnan. Again, I thought that's really cool. Linda Carter. Mm, yay. Um, I, I will say, I'm, I'm not reading the full list. It's just so long. We'll be here all night. Uh, Noah Centineo, who's the Adam Smasher for Black Adam. Uh, Kaylee Cuoco, so a little Harley Quinn action. Oh, cool. Ava DuVernay. Oh? Hmm. I think, because she's on that new show, like, because New Gods died, but then she was on that new show. Oh, man, what's it called? Shoot. Stand by. I can't remember. It's a very obscure DC property, and as it turns out, I have the first issue, which I didn't even realize. Um, But, God, I cannot remember what it's called, because it's not, again, it's not a... one of the super famous ones. So everyone out there, forgive me. I'm going to figure it out if my internet would move faster. Come on, wake up. Wake up. There you go. Poor little pumpkin spice latte in it. It'll wake it up. I know you got some sitting right next to you. you don't act like you don't. Uh, I mean, I pretty much bleed it. Naomi. That's what it was. Naomi. Oh, that's the uh, the one that... That just came out like... Not very long ago. It was one of the ones that I think Bendis was involved in developing for DC. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it was on Bendis had like his own like sub label for DC and she was part of that. Yeah. Yes. Cause I've got the first, I don't know. I probably got the first five or six issues of that. It, it was decent. Okay. Yeah. Like that. I mean, so I'm sure that's what she's going to be there to talk about. Who else do we got here? Ron Funches, <laughs> King Shark from Harley Quinn. Uh, I love him. He's so damn funny. Um, he was let, in that uh, that TV series that you and I are the only people in the world that admit out Powerless. Loud. Like, powerless yeah. was awesome. I love that show. I don't show. care what anyone says. Powerless was great. I had um, a great time with it. It was so funny. Uh, Leslie Grace, new Batgirl. She's there. Uh, James Gunn. So, obviously, Peacemaker. Grant Gustin. David Harewood from Supergirl. Uh, who else? Aldous Hodge, our Hawkman. Christina Hodson, writer of Birds of Prey, plus The Flash, plus Batgirl. Uh, I think I also, yeah, Adil L. R. B. I I think he's one of the directors for Batgirl. So that's, they will be there. Uh, Tyler Hecklin, Superman from Superman and Lois. Patty Jenkins, that's cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, I figured she'd be off in the realm of Star Wars by now. Yeah. Dwayne Johnson. I don't know who that is. Dwayne Johnson. No? No. Doesn't ring a bell. No, no, don't know. He sounds nice. Um, Who else? He sounds tiny. He does. Sounds like like a loser, if I'm being honest. I don't know. Dwayne Johnson. Give me your lunch money, nerd. Um, Okay. If I was named Dwayne Johnson, I would just totally go by another name. Yeah, yeah. Like stony or something that's like that. good yeah something from the flintstones um zoe kravitz of course uh jim lee again my hero of course i love jim lee ah uh, amazing javisha leslie batgirl zachary levi our shazam uh todd mcfarlane that's interesting probably has something to do with the toys i would imagine yeah that makes sense um Ezra oh, by the way, Zachary Levi, for, for you know fans of his out there that you know may not be into him outside of the DC realm, he has a movie coming out where he, I can't remember what it's even called, Underdog Story. I, I can't remember what it's called, but he's playing Kurt Warner, the which was the quarterback for the St. Louis Rams in their amazing 1999 season, and he you know NFL quarterback beyond that, uh, played for the Cardinals briefly, for, I think the Giants briefly. Anyway. Uh, Kurt Warner is an incredible, amazing story. So since he is playing the the lead role in that, I'm very interested in watching that. All right. Nice. It, it'll be up your your alley because it's along the lines of it's less about the sports and it's more about the the people. It'll be more like a Hoosiers type of a movie versus yeah. you know, that that sort of a thing. Well, I think anyway. I said, like, I don't watch sports, but I do like sports movies. So um, this, this one will be worth checking out just because this guy's story. He was bagging groceries when he got a call to go try out for the Rams. Uh, and he made it as familiar. the backup quarterback. And their starting quarterback got hurt in like preseason or early on in the season. And he took over and won the bloody Super Bowl as the quarterback. 
Spoilers. All right. I know it happened like 22 years ago, but, you know. Okay. Uh, anyway, Ezra Miller, obviously. Jason Momoa, obviously. Uh, Anson Mount, who is doing the Injustice thing, so I'm guessing they're they're going to do something for the Injustice animated film. Um, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> it is funny oh. to see him doing, like, promo stuff for fandom because, like, that's just so not him you know like he's he sort of just become this actor's actor and it's like nope now you got to go back out there and got to shill your movie um he, he does appear to be a little bit of a a recluse when it yeah comes to the like it's like he's staying out of the yeah paparazzi and all that other stuff you just you don't see or hear much about him at least i don't exactly he's like so private so it is funny to see him on this fandom promo being like yeah the you know join us for fandom it's gonna be fabulous it's just it's interesting uh matt reeves of course um rachel scarston from uh batwoman scott snyder tara strong you said scott snyder and for some reason my head registered as Zack snyder and my ears went up no damn it <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh bruce tim james tucker elizabeth tulock uh yeah so again there's there's it's such a long list but interesting the full list you guys can go out there and find it uh but it is out there so well this thing rolls for what eight straight hours or something like that yeah oh yeah they they got time to work some folks in and here's the bitch of it which i did not tell you until now uh is that my one sister came to visit me last weekend and both of my sisters were supposed to come visit but my younger sister amy her husband came down with COVID. So oh. he's fine. He's healthy. Taylor, we love you. Glad you're feeling better. Um, so she couldn't come. And so now she's supposed to come next weekend, as long as she continues to be healthy, because she hasn't caught it. She's still negative. Um, so if all holds in there, she will be coming fandom weekend. So well, we know what she's going to do when she's in town then, don't we? Well, what I'm going to say is I'm going to have to catch up on fandom after the fact. I won't be... If she's here, I'm not going to be watching it live. You know, I'm going to be entertaining. You know, all things considered, I probably will be doing the same as my daughters are having their 16th birthday party next weekend. So I'm going to be rushing around, buying last minute items, getting the house ready for 35 insane teenage girls to be running around my place for several hours. So I'll probably be doing a lot of, I might have it like on in the background while I'm working and stuff, but yeah, me sitting down in front of a TV for six or eight hours ain't happening. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see how it goes, uh, <laughs> but that's okay. Time with family, more important than watching, you know, movie trailers on the internet. I, can I mean, watch some let, let's not act like the good stuff won't be online within 60 seconds of it premiering on Fando. Exactly. I, I will be able to see it all uh, later. So I just won't be you watching be the it first to watch the Batman trailer, or you can just wait until they drop it on the WB website and on their Twitter and on their Facebook well, and on this, everything else. And it's if I like remember gonna... correctly, last time it was like Comic-Con where the second it hit play on Fandom, it showed up on YouTube. Yep, because before the trailer was even open, I had my phone up scrolling through the WB stuff, and there it was. Yeah, it was immediate. So it's fine. It's all good. I'll make it work. But anyway, so lots of good stuff to look forward to uh, with Fandome. So I want to talk a little bit about some of these and like what we think we might see or what we hope we might see. Um, so, I mean, starting with the Batman, because that is, does seem to be the big one, because we already know we're getting the new trailer which is exciting. So uh, anything you're hoping to see in for the Batman come next week? Without trying to sound like a snarky asshole, uh, specifically for the Batman, uh, maybe a little bit more detail of like Riddler or, or some of the villains that are there mm -hmm. in the film, maybe a nice clean shot of the, the front of the, the bat costume, maybe a, you know, in an action shot or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, oh God, I don't want to keep doing this, but something better for Catwoman. I love Zoe Kravitz. She's lovely. She's a very good actress. Uh, she's in one of my favorite movies of the last decade, uh, Mad Max Fury Road, and I loved her in that. I just, I, I saw that snippet of her in this trailer, and I was like, oh God, no. 
So you do know that that I mean that we saw that outfit in the first trailer, the teaser trailer last year. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember. I haven't yeah. watched it for a while. Um I mean, but I think I think I know what you're saying, and I also feel like I'm kind of the same, is you know, I'll take whatever they want to give me. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Uh because the first trailer did excite me i was i i really was impressed with it um thematically it excites me aesthetically it does not right right and so i am hoping that you know we get maybe something you know because they were still i think they were still filming when they released the teaser yeah that's right because when they released yeah. the teaser they said they had shot what 30 percent of the movie or 35 percent, something like that like yeah, it was yeah. not far along so i'm hoping now that the movie's in post-production we'll get something a little more epic a little more grand you know something a little more cinematic um and yeah i think a, a, a little hints of uh some of those elements aesthetically moving towards something a little more traditional i know maybe that maybe that's a pipe dream um yeah i but think it is it very well could be but you know what i will take story and character over aesthetics if they can deliver on those fronts i'll forgive things that i don't like the look of if the batmobile kicks ass i'll forgive the fact that it looks like absolute street trash floating around on that chassis uh it's you know it deliver for me on the fronts that entertain me most being characters and and you know just entertainment value as a whole and i will forgive the way something looks i will i absolutely will yeah but I keep basing this on most of what we see is just the look of it. And I don't like the look of it. Yeah. I just don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm hoping that the trailer gives me some glimpses of things that aesthetically that I will like more and I'll be, and, and it'll help, you know, with, cause I think that's, what's holding me back, you back and Brendan. I think we all are very much on the same page as far as that. So just getting a little, some little, and if, like, if, if, I'm not saying we're the voice of geekdom out here or anything. And certainly there are people that, that have a different outlook on it than we do, but we can't be the only three that think it, you no, know what I'm saying? It's no. just, we, we can't, if the three of us loving Batman, like we do for pretty much our entire lives are just like, I want to love this, but I'm not feeling it. I mean, we, we can't be, we, we can't be it. Yeah. There, there has to be other people out there and you know, it's, I don't want to dog on the movie because I haven't seen the movie and I don't want to, you know, cash it out before I give it its fair chance. I'm just, all I'm saying is these are not the choices that I was hoping were going to be made for this film. So sure. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I'm excited to maybe get a little more action, get something again, something with a little more scope because now they will have shot it and they will have some completed effects where they can show us something a little more, uh, you know, a little more grand, which is exciting. And then, yeah, just, you know, just a cup, maybe just an alternate look for the Riddler, you know, just give me a glimpse of a bowler hat and I'll be a little more happier. <laughs> um, so looking forward to it. I think, it, you know, it's, it's definitely feels like it's going to be much like last time. It was sort of the finale of the day. I think that's going to, going to be the same here, um, which is great. Um, but something else that's going to be, very interesting to see how much they give us is the flash film. Uh, I'm honestly, honestly, I would have been way more excited about this trailer. If in the closing out, they say, see the new Batman trailer and also be the first to see the, the teaser for the flash coming 2022 or whatever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That would have maybe woken me up to believing that movie exists, which it does not. <laughs> well, what I, what I was going to say is, you know, I, I am honestly, more looking forward to what they might show us from the fa the flash uh because i'm really looking forward to the movie i'm really looking you know obviously it's it's a flash movie that also features two at least two batmen so there's a lot to be excited about and we haven't gotten official footage yet so what do you think we'll see and what are you hoping we'll see i'm i'm hoping and you know this is probably a real reach but maybe some story details like some kind of a synopsis or or something along those lines i mean i know they've been shooting a little bit here and there so i mean it's the, it's not out of the realm to see some footage but i'm not holding my breath that we're gonna get it mm -hmm. like i i think that they probably have enough to do some kind of a teaser like what they did with batman last year yeah but i i'm i'm just I would think that that's a big enough piece of news that they certainly would have put that in this trailer, right? Hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, they want reveals. They want surprises, so. <clears throat> well, I get that. I mean, 
I guess we assumed there would be a new Batman trailer, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I would like a little footage, a little, little, you know, light shed. I don't want, I don't want too many details. Like you, you mentioned that, that one piece of, of concept art that had the, the character blacked out, like they were censoring it for some reason. I don't even need that reveal. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I just, I just something. I, I just want something more. Don't give me too much. Just give me, give me a taste. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't serve me a whole plate. Just give me a, a cheese cube of it. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think we will, I think we'll absolutely get the costume reveal of the actual costume for the flash. Um, and along those lines, I think we might get that for other characters as well, like Supergirl, you know, because we've seen enough of that already. You know, they've already teased those costumes online, on Instagram, and then we've seen set photos. So I feel like at the very least, we will get uh, the the character reveals, including probably Michael Keaton's Batman. Um, and then I would not be... If, if they show anything... Outside of a still photo, like a, a motion shot that lasts for three seconds of Keaton in a Batman costume, the internet's going to break. Yeah. Right there. It's done. Yeah. The internet's over with right there. Uh, well, and that's what I'm saying. I would not be surprised. I'm not holding my breath, but I would not be surprised if they at least did some sort of sizzle. You know, maybe not a full trailer, but maybe a minute long sizzle of footage that they do have that is readily available just to give us a taste. So... That's what I'm hoping for, and I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm thinking is not out asking too much. I think we'll definitely get the character reveals, and then I think we'll probably get a little bit of footage. The sizzle could be just a behind-the-scenes thing. You know, they've done that before. They, uh, they basically did that with Suicide Squad last year. Yeah, exactly. So that, and honestly, remember when they did it with Justice League? They did it way back when. Um, I could see them doing that. Like, that if they if the footage is not show-ready yet, a way they could give us something is to do the behind the scenes little featurette thing. Seems reasonable enough. Yeah. But the flash is, you know, obviously it's a, it's a big one. I'm super psyched about it. Uh, black Adam. I think we will, that one is finished shooting. So I, I, I feel like a teaser is eminent for yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think we will at least get a teaser for that. Um, like probably... it, it, it surprised me. Like you told, you sent me that message. It's like, you need to watch the, the fandom trailer before we do the recording. I'm like, oh shit. I expected to watch it. And you're like, teaser for Black Adam, teaser for Flash, trailer for Batman. And then I watched it and I'm like, oh, you give me like a second and a half for everything here. Well, I, yeah, I didn't mean to you imply that it was going to show us. Sorry. All I said is you need to watch it so we can talk about it. But, but I read it as you need to watch it, not, hey, you, you should watch this. You oh. need to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, it broke my heart, Andy. Sorry. So I don't know if you saw this, but over the past couple days, past day, um, there were some photos leaked of the Black Adam costume as well as the Hawkman costume. Oh, I did not see those. The costumes were not on actors. They were hanging up. You know, were they in, on hangers? They, yeah, they were. Son of a. Uh, Hawkman's weren't on hangers. Black Adams were. So, because of that leak, uh, again, I'm sure we'll get a teaser. And much like I was saying with the Flash, I think we would pro we'll probably get some sort of character reveals, uh, first looks of uh, at least the Justice Society of Black Adam, Hawkman, um, Doctor Fate, etc. You know. I'm intrigued. Yeah. So I won't go too much into the leaked photos other than the black Adam suit looked pretty much how you would think it would. Uh, I imagine it looks like a black Shazam costume. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much just looks like a black Shazam costume. So it doesn't look bad. It looks good, but I think it's going to look a lot better on uh, what's it. What was his name again? Dwayne, Dwayne Johnson. I think it's going to yeah. look pretty good on him. D Wayne Johnson. Um, but I will say the Hawkman stuff looks really rad so i'm super i'm, I'm not even going to look those pictures up because don't I'm, I'm yeah wait to see what it looks like yes so if they wanna, wait for fandom they want to show it to me on fandom i'm interested but until then i can wait yeah whatever they're going to show us in fandom is going to look better than these things look up you know the again hanging up in in a dressing room or sitting in a pile in a dressing room because the hawkman stuff was just like in boxes and in a pile so tremendous. it's not the best way to see it but 
you know, use Hawkman a little bit of Hawkman is one of those characters, like, I've, I've never been, like, really into Hawkman as a character, but for some reason, even going back to my days of watching, like, Super Friends stuff, I always thought he just looked cool. Oh, yeah. Know? He's awesome. Looks amazing. So, I'm into that. Uh, and, yeah, I think, I think a teaser for this is appropriate. Uh, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which just started production, so it's pretty early on, but we full know trailer, it's going to be there. Full, full trailer, definitely. Full trailer. Full, the full five-minute trailer with extended action sequence. Um, I mean, here's what I think, though, is like, I wouldn't put it past them to give us a little tiny something, uh, because they revealed the new costumes already. So because they already revealed that, it's not like they can use that, you know? So I don't know. I remember when Aquaman 1 had just started shooting, even then James Wan shared a little tiny bit of footage. So it might just be that. It might be like just a little tease, and then James Wan and Jason Momoa will talk about it. Um, so I'm not expecting a ton just because it it did just start production, but any at that point, anything's a bonus as far as I'm concerned. Have, have we confirmed that uh, Black Manta is in this movie yet? Is well, that... he's going to show up for fandom, so yeah. Well, he could just be doing a promotion for, you know, hey, remember that show we did a couple years ago? He's, he's actually promoting Candyman, so. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, of course he's in it. Okay. He's he's talked about it, and yeah. But I did not I did not see Patrick Wilson on the list. I did, he, Black Manta was on the list, but no Patrick Wilson. So maybe it'll be Black Manta, Jason Momoa, and James Wan. But wait, I don't even think I saw James Wan on the list now that I think about it. Uh, well, we'll see. Well, anyway. we, I did see that photo that was talked about with uh, Patrick Wilson on a beach or something. Yeah, Castaway Wilson. Castaway Orm. So, yeah. I've been Aqu- watching a lot of Patrick Wilson movies lately because I've been watching a lot of James yeah, Wan. That's right, a lot, of, a lot of James Wan scare, scarathon. Even my wife, I was watching the... I think it was Insidious 2 the other night, and my wife's like, is he in all of this guy's movies? I said, yeah, pretty, pretty much. much. Hey, I respect that. I love that James Wan is like, Patrick Wilson is awesome, and if the rest of Hollywood doesn't realize it, I'll just put him in every movie. That's fine. I'm saying, I mean, that, that guy's a great actor. He's a handsome dude. Yeah. He always turns in a good performance. I've never seen him in anything that I thought, eh. No, he's and always he, great. He it in. He, he's always a game. Yep. He's amazing. I love the Conjuring films. I really like, actually, I really like the Insidious films. Like, I don't love them, but I really like them. I, I'm like yeah. three quarters, two thirds, three quarters of the way through the fourth one right now, even, which has nothing to do with James Wan or, or Patrick Wilson, but I'm enjoying that. It's, it's, here's the thing. We talked about this. Sorry for the tangent, everybody out there, but hey, it's <laughs> Halloween season. Um, like we said about Conjuring 3, which is Conjuring 3 is actually pretty darn good, but the problem is it had to follow Conjuring 1 and 2. Exactly. And Insidious 3 is exactly the same way. It's pretty darn good. It just had to follow Insidious 1 and 2. And then Insidious 4 isn't great, but it's still solid. And it actually closes the loop on the franchise. So, you know, like, it's a really damn... Like, you have... Insidious 1 and 2 are, I think, great. Insidious 3 I, I, is the good. The second one is my favorite. I think the first one, first and second, are on pretty equal par. I have the third one just barely behind those two. Yeah, yeah. And this fourth one, I'm going to tell you, it's probably just going to be barely behind, unless it really crashes and burns at the tail end. I, I'm into it. No, the it's good. The she's in the tunnel opening those suitcases. Yeah. I, I ain't playing. That's one of the most terrifying things I've seen in that whole franchise. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Anyway, DC... Anyway, so uh, Aquaman, we'll see what we get. I'm not holding my breath for a lot, but again, I'm, you know, anything will be good. Uh, Shazam Fury. They're going to surprise everybody by having Jason Momoa wear a shirt. Then I'm not watching. Okay, cool. What's the point of that? (laughs) Um, Shazam Fury of the Gods will be there as well. That's finished shooting, I believe. I was going to say that. That's probably teaser ready. Yeah, so, so that we... I think we'll get a little more. You know, it's funny because we have to judge it all based on its level of completedness, right? Right. <laughs> um, so, like, the things that are furthest along are the Batman, because, you know, they started shooting the Batman, I think, five years ago. Um, Feels like it, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Shazam Fury of the Gods, I think it's it's just a few steps behind Black Adam, if, I, if I'm remembering the right timeline. 
Yeah, it feels uh, like they've been shooting that forever too, you know. But yeah, so like Adam. yeah, so a teaser for Shazam wouldn't be bad. I mean, we know there's footage of it because they had that. Uh, what's his name that's directing? I sorry, Sandberg. Yeah, David Sandberg. Yeah, he had that real brief. You know, what was it, ten or fifteen seconds of the light in his chest? I don't. I don't even remember. It was a few months back. It was just like a goofy yeah, thing. Like yeah. they called it a teaser, but it was really just a goofy. Oh, video right, thing. right, right. Yeah. You know, so we know there is footage out there, I guess. Yeah. Well, okay. So sorry to go back. You know, I kind of started with this format and then I let it lapse. It's like, what do we hope to see? So like for Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, what do I hope to see is anything, but it would be really cool to get a glimpse of some of like the new creatures we might encounter in aquaman 2 because that's one thing that was, i love about aquaman 1 so i'd love a glimpse into that um and then for shazam fury of the gods we've seen the shazam elite we've seen them in their new outfits the new suits look great they're on point well done so i think for fury of the gods what i would love to see is the villains because the villains are helen mirren and lucy Liu, and i want to see what they look like you know like the, those are two great actors i'm excited they're in the movie and so yeah, give me a I'll glimpse tell, of the bad guys. I'll tell you what guys. Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu look like. Hot women, that's what they that's look true. like. That's true. So let's see them in some comic book gear. I'm all for it. Yeah. What I what I want from the uh, Aquaman is information. I mean, kind of the same thing maybe with Flash. I'm, I'm hoping for maybe a general synopsis, you know, and I'm trying to think realistically here of something that actually could happen versus, you know, I, I want somebody to show up with a surprise. Oh, guess what villain is guest starring in this? You know, I'm not, I'm not expecting any of that. Just maybe a little bit of a synopsis, maybe some locations that we're dealing with, like, you know, what actually is this lost kingdom sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Shazam, kind of the same thing, you know, what we're dealing with and, you know, seeing the, the reveal of uh, those two ladies in some costumes, that would be, great and uh talky tawny i mean you, oh, you gotta right, 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 gotta right. have that in shazam at some <laughs> point right yep true all right i'm down for all that cool well those are the movies those are the movies that are gonna be represented the batman the flash black adam aquaman and the lost kingdom shazam fury of the gods um and then, oh, and then Batgirl, obviously. So, like, Batgirl was not in the, the teaser trailer, but we know that the directors are going to be there. We know that Leslie Grace is going to be there. So I'll tell you, here's what I want to see. I want to see what Batgirl's going to look like. That, that, was, that was exactly where I went as soon as you said it. It might be too early to hope to see, but maybe not. Costume reveal. Yeah, costume reveal. I mean, again, it could be her, too her early, but... I don't want to see the damn thing on a hanger. I want to see her in the costume. No, I want it on a bat hanger. Damn your eyes. That's the bat. The bat hanger is the best way to display a superhero costume. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let it go with her because she's not a billionaire, but you know. Right. Well, so for that, like, I think what we'll get is we'll get her chatting with the directors and they'll, you know, it'll be very fluff. Oh, we're so excited to be doing this and there's more to come and we can't wait for you guys to see it. And, you know, Barbara's so strong and I'm excited to bring her to life. All that, blah, 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 blah. No real info, but just they're excited. Um, but it would be very nice if they gave us just something more than that. And I think that the costume I, reveal I, would be the right way to go. I feel like at bare minimum, and I'm, I'm again, trying to keep expectations under, you know, chains here. Exactly. At, at bare minimum, I would say we'll at least get some concept art of it. Yeah, that's possible. Because they're, they're, you know, just coming out there to say, hey, this, you know, what you said there'll probably be some of that, but I mean, if that's all they're going to bring, why even have them there? Yeah. But you know, if they're doing that and talking over like some concept art sketches of her on a rooftop or something like that, you know, I'm, I'm in on that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all for that. No, that's, that's true. I'd be totally fine with that too. Well, we and I hope, hope it's close. I hope it's closer to classic Batgirl look than the Batgirl of Burnside, but I'm honestly expecting it's going to be somewhere in between. I agree. I, I want the more classic full cowl look than maybe the more the more recent one where it's like kind of half mask but with the ears. Like anyway, I, uh, I don't mind that one. the The Burnside costume, I here here here's as as heterosexual male I say, uh, 
I understand why that costume exists, and I don't want to say that they're wrong for doing it, but it's much less of a traditional, some heterosexual male drew this really sexy girl in this costume versus a practical costume that somebody would actually use to do what she's doing, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Yeah. So I, I would imagine in today's day and age, they're going to lean more toward the practicality versus the sexuality. So... That's why I think maybe somewhere in between is the best I could hope for there, even though I'm not excited about the, the Burnside style of mm -hmm. it. Uh, the other thing I thought of just as we were chatting is like if we get some sort of tease for Batgirl, I wonder if we'll get some sort of little bit about Blue Beetle. Because that's another one that seems like it's in motion and I'm looking forward to it. And so it would be also nice to, to get just a quick little update on that, you know, if it's coming. And I would expect if it is that it'll be along the same lines I said with Batgirl that, you know, the best we're going to see is concept sketches or art, things yeah, like that. Yeah, I think so. Very, very little detail, but maybe just, you know, a little tiny tidbit for the audience. Exactly. So, all right. So, I mean, we're not going to go down the entire list, but is there anything else that we didn't talk about? Because we really just talked about the movies, because let's be honest, that's what people want to talk about. Um, but if there's anything else, like, coming from fandom that's not one of the movies that you're really excited about, you're really looking forward to? Probably something to do with the the Matt Reeves uh, Gotham Police series. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to see something about that, but I question whether or not they want to hold back on any big details with that until after the Batman has been released. Right. No, that's a good point. And along those lines, because when we were speculating about that uh, Fortnite footage going, what the hell is this? Uh, you brought up the new animated series, the Batman Cape Crusader. And honestly, that, I, that had fallen off my radar. So it would be really nice if we'd get an update on that, some footage of that to see what the new show is going to look like. That would be cool. How about Young Justice Season 4? We got anything on that yet? Well, on Twitter today, we got an update. I think it was from Greg Wiseman. I did retweet it. Here we go. Yep, it's from Greg Wiseman. He says, update. 20 episodes are in the can and 6 are in post-production. And that's for Young Justice Phantoms, which is Season 4. So it's getting really close, which is great news. Well, since they finally gave me that season three, I'll believe that without seeing the trailer. Yeah. Flash is still on the shit list, so I'm not believing that without the trailer. But Young Justice season four, all in. Now, now you believe them. I do. Okay, well, fair enough. Cool. That show's so damn good. I know, right? Even my kids love that one. Like, that's that's the one show... Like, even though my daughters have kind of outgrown the geekiness and now they're into the TikTok stuff and all this other, you know, weird, you know, whatever teenage girls are into. <laughs> uh, that that was the one show that when I turned it on, they'd stop what they were doing and they'd sit down and watch. So, Well, good. I respect it. All right. Sweet. Well, DC Fandom, like we said, is coming before you know it uh, in about a week and a half. And I'm psyched. Again, that trailer today really did the trick, got me really excited, and really it forced me to, again, pull out and go, oh, what are we looking forward to? Uh, again, the things that we didn't really go into in depth, but we will get more about is Peacemaker. Uh, Superman and Lois was in there. Um, the Flash, Batwoman, Supergirl, Titans, Doom Patrol, and then uh, Gotham Knights, the video game, Suicide Squad, the video game. So all kinds of DC goodness coming, not to mention comic books. Like, they're going to... I'm sure talk about what the latest in the comics. So a lot to look forward to and I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Here, here. Sweet. All right. Well, we're looking forward to fandom. We hope you guys are too, but stay tuned to the show and we will do that recap episode. Uh, promise within a, within a couple of days, <laughs> depending on how our schedules are, but uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, anyway, now Let's uh, check back in with Terry McGinnis and Bruce Wayne, because we certainly did watch the next episode of Batman Beyond. So Brendan's had to do the last few, Jamie. Welcome back to the Batman Beyond uh, fold here. We're getting very close to the end of season two. And so last time we did April Moon with Brendan. This one, 
So this is season two, episode 23. It is called Centuries of the Last Cosmos. Um, it is directed by Dan Reba, written by John Shirley and Rich Vogel. This one aired on May 6th of 2000. So here we meet a new friend of Terry and Max's, a new friend, and he's obsessed with this video game. It's a VR video game called Centuries of the Last Cosmos. So I didn't know what to make of this title when I read it. I was like, what the hell is this? And then I learned. So yeah, they're playing this VR video game. This this friend of theirs is obsessed with it. He's really, really good at it. And he like got the high score. Um, so he gets called to the creator of the video games, big, huge mansion, who has called over everybody who's the high scorers, and he enlists them to essentially be like his own little private army, his own little private army of sentries. And he has built the suits and hoverboards, hover whatever, uh, hover discs that they use in the video game. He built them for real. He gives them to these kids, and he starts having these kids go out and do missions for him. So... Terry, as Batman, starts investigating. He collides with these sentries. He's like, wait a minute, I recognize those guys from the video game. What are they up to? They're destroying records. That's not good. Uh, and so he starts doing research. The uh, the creator of this video game, who they called the Wise One, he sends them all on another mission to kill what he calls the Dark One. And uh, forget his name. Doesn't matter. Harry Knowles. Pretty much, Harry Knowles, voiced by Pat Oswalt. Uh, yeah, this other guy, they go out to kill him. Batman saves him. And we find out it's because this guy is the actual creator of the game. He's the one who wrote it. And so the producer of the game stole it, never gave him his cut. There's a lawsuit, so he's using these kids to try and eradicate this guy who's suing him. Batman stops him reveals the uh, whole plot and so these kids who are the centuries they actually turn on the wise one and they're like no you know there's a code of honor and you're shameful and so uh he all, there's also a thing where the wise i can call him the wise one because i remember his name either um he like has like a little bit of emperor palpatine action going on he's got the cloak he's got the electricity he's he's out there fighting with them too causing trouble and so they stop him you know, he goes off to jail and now these kids are super into the writer who created it and they all become friends and Batman saved the day. So that is Centuries of the Last Cosmos. So what'd you think, Jamie? Uh, I uttered a single phrase to myself no less than five times watching this episode. And that phrase was, George Lucas gonna sue somebody's ass. <laughs> I mean, it started off and I was thinking to myself, oh, the new gods in Batman Beyond, this ought to be interesting. And then, it, you know, they kind of divert back to it. And like the music, I was like, is that Star Wars music? Eh, not quite, but it sure wants to be. And that kind of carried a theme throughout the thing. And then they've got flame swords instead of laser swords. <laughs> and they've yeah. got, like you said, the, the Emperor Palpatine lightning from the fingertips and the robes and the whole works going on. And the the line about she uh, Max says something to Terry and Terry goes is Jar Jar lame and I'm like really guys I yeah mean, is yeah. there <laughs> anything you don't want to ape from Star Wars in the like Battlestar Galactica didn't wholesale steal from Star Wars the way this episode did <laughs> and that's saying something uh as everybody knows by now my my thoughts on this show are are, are pretty equal I'll, I'll give it it's due when it's due but uh this this was not not great <laughs> i i just if if anything the only entertainment value i got off of was the snickering of going i can't believe they did that with the music i can't believe they did that with the sword i can't believe they did that with the emperor can't believe they had the jar jar line in there like they, they just shamelessly stole everything from star wars in this episode and mm. to the point where you can't even call it homage it's just plain theft <laughs> yeah so yeah I, I i wasn't keen on this one did you appreciate the irony of the whole episode being about these two guys who created something together and one of, one of them's trying to eliminate the other one so he can take sole credit and then when the episode's over in the credits it says batman created by bob kane and not until you mentioned it but i mean it makes perfect sense now i saw that and i was like oh man <laughs> 
<laughs> a little close to home. Um, I'm with you. I didn't like this one. It, I mean, I guess I kind of appreciated the idea, but it just... I, this is just not the kind of case I need to see Batman solving. Uh, an IP dispute between co-creators. Eh. And then, like, like I was very unclear as to, like, okay, he recruits these kids who are obsessed with the game. Sure. And he's like, you guys are really good at the game. Sure. I guess with his vast fortune, that's how he was able to create all of this equipment in real life, including his own electric emperor thing, I guess. But... What did he tell these kids that they were going to do where like he didn't brainwash them. They still seem to be the kids. And so like they've got to know they're doing something illegal that I just was like, what did he tell them? Because they're they're destroying files. They they blow up an entire floor. They were missing something in their lives anyway, because even at the end of the episode, when they figured out the other guy was truly the creator, they're you know, cult-like status with him already. Yeah. Like, they just want to have something to follow and look up to, almost to a religious type of a level. I mean, it's just, you know, I guess maybe sad commentary on the the state of kids and their obsession with video games and, you know, these days versus video games, social media or whatever, but... I, I really don't think that's what they were trying to get across. You know, that that's really, I guess, my problem with the episode. The, the entertainment value, corny as it may be, I guess was there, but like at the heart of it, what story were they really trying to tell me? Like what, the dangers of obsession? I, I don't feel like they got any point across with that. No, they didn't. The, the, the break with reality, playing virtual reality, not understanding the blurred line anymore, because you know I, I remember way back in the day, there was problems that parents were having with Dungeons and Dragons because these kids were having breaks with reality and cutting each other with swords and shit. And it's like, it, I don't feel like there was any commentary leaning that direction. Like, what in the hell were they even thinking other than we're going to swipe a bunch of shit from Star Wars and a tiny little bit from the last Starfighter here? Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, there have been a few stories that take that same idea, like The Last Starfighter. That's that's a good pull. But I even, love that movie, by the way. Oh, me too. Uh, directed by Nick Castle. The Shape. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, but, like, even... Uh, it was a relatively recent Ender's Game, I think was sort of the same idea. Uh, kind of, sort of, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, like, so, like, I thought that was kind of the route it was going. I still thought it was going to be a little more sci-fi, but he's like, no, he just sort of wants his own little his own little army but you're right like if it if it wanted to say something of like oh you know there's life outside the game they never make that point at all uh oh. so yeah it's it's watchable oh shit i just hit something break stuff why don't you gambit fell down well that's okay then. i'm so sorry monami <laughs> uh anyway um but yeah well it's watchable it's 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 not bad but yeah i just was like oh i just wasn't super into it you know it was was certainly not my favorite and again it didn't it just didn't feel very like a very batman-y adventure i i don't have a built-in care for this show anyway and this show didn't do anything to bolster any emotion that direction from me either so i'm i'm just if i I, I have no desire to ever watch it again. And I'm not saying that because like it was that damn bad. It's just, I don't care. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Which might even be worse than me hating it. It's, I just didn't care. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, okay, well then what what about a letter grade for Centuries of the Last Cosmos? D plus. <laughs> well, I, was, I was thinking C minus, so great. You're always so generous though. Yeah, I always, I always I, do. I, think, I, I always do one above what you and Brendan first. do. You no, I th- I think what you do. I've got your game figured out now, pal. What you do is you make Brendan and I go first with the letter grades, and then you just go one mark above it, so you don't look like the bad guy on this episode. I see how you work now. Yeah, yeah I, I get it. Yeah. Well, next time I can go first if it'll make you feel better. But I swear to God, I swear to you, <laughs> with God as my witness, I was thinking C minus. I really was. Fair enough. It, again, it's it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Yeah, like it, yeah, it's fine. It, it's not it's not the worst. It's just like eh. fine. Fine is even a little generous to me. Maybe yeah. that's the difference between your C minus and my D plus. I think fine's too little generous. It it's there. Yeah, it's a thing. They made it. I I've spent twenty two minutes doing worse. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there you go. That's Centuries of the Last Cosmos. The next one is going to be Payback. Yeah. yeah. So it's your homework for next time. Uh, anyway, thanks for continuing. We're getting pretty close to the end, which is exciting. Um, but we're not yeah, quite. Season, season three is a short one, isn't it? Like yeah, 12 it is. It's only like 13 episodes. Yeah. And I think we've got like three or four left in season two. So, yeah. Yep. Three more. Pr- pretty soon we're going to have to figure out another show to watch. And so help me God if you guys stick me with another one like this. Oh. I mean, Brendan is really banging the drum for the Batman. Which, I would prefer Brave and the Bold or Batman 66. Which is why we should do Batman 66. Well, we'll see how it goes. All right, but uh, this episode's not over just yet, because as always, we have to check in with you, fine feathered finks, as we crack open the Wayne Manor mailbox. It's time again for the Wayne Manor mailbox. You've got mail. Stare. Maybe temporary. She wrote a letter. You are one hell of a messenger. This is all Master Wayne. All right, so this message here is from Tom. It says, hey guys, I just wanted to see. Since Andy has made his triumphant return to Orlando, does this mean we could do a The Batman Watch Party? Just a thought. Could be fun. Have a great week. Tom, I'm open to it. Definitely. I don't know how many I don't know how many listeners we've got in Orlando, but it could be really fun. I just don't know if Jamie's going to be coming down to Orlando in March. No, because it's too expensive right now. I'd be there. I would be there right now if it wasn't so bloody expensive. In fact, well, I do have a guest room, but maybe that not doesn't... for the whole Drooly clan. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the other part of it. You you have a guest room, and I need three. Yeah. By then, oh my God! By then, there will be a newborn in the house too. I mean, is, I can sleep. I can sleep through that stuff. I, I'm that's fine with me. But yeah, which means I'll be able to take my child to a, their first Batman movie. I was going to say you already got them booked for HHN next year. Or? Oh, oh, Catherine and I every night we go to Halloween Horror Nights. We figure out how are we going to do this next year with a baby because we're going to do it. Like Sweet. literally, we saw a family with an infant and Catherine went up to them and was like hey i'm not weird sorry to bother you so how was it tonight with the infant what did you do how does it work so like yeah we're doing research no she's totally weird but she's weird in all of the right ways (laughs) she's amazing yeah uh all right anyway so yes watch party next next year could be very fun uh just uh, need a babysitter which is gonna be new uh all right, next message is from Aaron Chavez. It says, hey, Bat Bros, Andy and Brendan's analysis of Superman Returns was spot on. I remember sitting in the theater almost saying out loud, real estate again when Lex's motivations were revealed. Andy called it the same movie made worse. Kevin Spacey and Brandon Routh were excellent. Bosworth was awful. I always want to watch the movie, but after I put it on, I can't finish it. It's just so disappointing. Love the pod, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, so yeah, on the last on the last uh, episode, someone had asked about Superman returns. Why does it have such a, you know, bad reputation? And Brendan and I shared our thoughts and we're glad Aaron, that it made sense to you. I I think that movie is unfairly maligned at times, but there's also legitimate criticisms to levy against it. Yeah. And I think you guys did a nice job of balancing that. I enjoy the film. I will watch it every couple like superman the movie i generally watch probably at least once a year and have for a very long time and even you know two through four i will i will watch relatively frequently you know especially two three and four probably every couple of years also but superman returns like once in a while i just get that burn my rear end to give it another chance and i watch it and there's things that i really really like about the film and there's things i really really just do not mm-hmm. yeah no and i and feel I, I, I think the biggest problem with that film and popular opinion, unpopular opinion, what have you, I don't know the director. Yeah. He has no ideas that are original that he can put forth in a way that are really compelling. Mm -hmm. I think he borrows and swipes ideas from other places. And then he, he doesn't, he's made it known at this point that he doesn't really like the idea of comic book characters. Like, 
oh, yellow spandex. Uh, yeah, that joke was funny in 2000, but uh, we get it, dude. You, you don't really like them to look like superheroes. Your Superman is a goddamn stalker, and your Lois Lane is the most miserable, lifeless character I've ever seen on a movie screen in my entire life. Lois Lane is vibrant. Lois Lane is is energetic. Lois Lane can get down to business. Like every iteration I've ever seen of Lois Lane in my life gives something to that level of, you know, you've you've got the driven journalist aspect. You've got the the smarter than you might think aspect. You know, you you've got the the feisty aspect that you get from uh, the likes of Margot Kidder or or uh, Erica Durant or Terry Hatcher even to a degree. Uh, you, you have the, the hard nosed, I'm all business and I'm not taking crap from men or anybody else like Amy Adams. You, you, you get so many different angles were done so well in their own way. And then you've got Kate Bosworth who gave nothing. And I don't know to blame her or singer or both or what, but it's abysmal. Like when I do watch the film, and I like the, the, you know, the bullets bouncing off of them, except for the eye thing. That bothers me just because I have sensitivity about my eyes. I can't even watch Visine commercials. The shuttle rescue is, is great. E- even the point where he lifts the rock at the end and shoots the heat vision at the broken glass. I mean, are they, should they be the climax of the film? No, probably not. There should have been, well, not probably, definitely not. That should have been like a mid-movie sequence, and then there should have been a big climax at the end where, you know, give me a Brainiac or Lex in a power suit or something. At that point, you were, you were dead, dead on. I think it was you that brought it up in 2006. They could have done this Mm -hmm. and they just didn't, but it just, I don't know that I guess love hate relationship with the film. There's things I really like and things I don't, but I mean, definitely to me, the worst part is Kate Bosworth followed by Brian Singer. I I just, I don't appreciate Brian Singer's work. I, I can't hardly watch anything that Brian Singer's done, even things I like, like Usual Suspects. I can't hardly even watch that anymore. And maybe I'm hung up about knowing that he's a real jackass in real life, but I try to separate art from artists, and even doing that, I, I have a hard time with his movies. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry to get on that whole tangent. No, it's okay. It sounded like you, <laughs> when we had that conversation, you were ready to chime in. Uh, now please, you get your chance. I was <laughs> driving around in my car. I was participating in the conversation. I wish I could remember everything that I was saying when it was going on, but... Instead, I'm just anger venting now, and I, I want to stop. So it's all good. I mean, I I agree with what uh what Aaron said, and what you even said is yeah. Every once in a while, I'm like, I have the urge to put it on, and and I feel like I want to watch it again, and then I watch it again, and I'm just like, and it's not a terribly made movie, but every time I watch it, I'm just like, oh, oh yeah. It just simply doesn't live up to potential that yeah. it had. Is it as good as Superman three or four? Maybe, but Superman three or four, as cornballish as they are, and believe me, they are because they're from an era where they didn't take superhero movies seriously for shit. Mm. They have entertainment value. I enjoy them almost for their silliness and their camp. I don't even have that for this movie. Yeah, you know? I, it's yeah. Just, they they tried to make a dead serious Superman movie based off of Donner, based off of Singer's idea of what a superhero should be, and it's just, it's not compelling. The superman Lois relationship is D-O-A, and I, it just, uh, anyway, I want to stop now. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. We did it again. Um, all right, next message is from Marcio Juarez. It says, hey, Bat family, hope all is well with you. Uh, I hope that baby Henry is doing great and settling in well after maternity leave has finished. I hope Andy has settled into his new house and back in Florida during Halloween. And I hope Jamie's feeling better and his kids are doing well and won that soccer game or whatever it was, as Andy put it. And he's enjoying pumpkin season. Oh, we're enjoying pumpkin season. You fret not, Mario Juarez. Listen, if, if you are what you eat is an actual thing, I'm not going to have to wait till midnight to turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> it it's, it's accurate. Um, we also have mass quantities of monster cereal in our closet. I, I've just got Count Chocula because honestly, it's the only one I don't like. But I've furiously been hunting that monster mash and I can't find it. <gasps> well, tell Michael Lyons. Maybe he'll send you a box. 
Yeah, buy me a three dollar box of cereal and spend twenty dollars to send it to me. That's worthwhile. Did you listen to the real fans uh, Halloween? I did. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. He's like, I got you one. I didn't. I was like, great. I have two in the I have two in the pantry, but yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Um, anyway, so Marcio continues. He says, I've got a question. I'll try to keep it short. We all love Batman and agree that uh, agree that, that is Bruce Wayne. But if you, had the ch- oh, if you had the chance to write his last story, who would you choose to put on the cowl as the next Batman? Dick Grayson, Damien, Tim, Terry, someone new? Or should Batman die or retire as Bruce? Uh, and then finally, have you ever been recognized in real life? I think Andy probably has the better chance, as he's referred to himself at some point as a bit of a podcast whore. Uh, would you like to be recognized, and how would you react? Thanks for the great content and fitting it around the busy schedule. It's greatly appreciated. It makes my day every time I see a new episode. Marcio Juarez. Thanks, Marcio. Uh, so first question, if Bruce were to hang up the cowl, either by death or retirement, who should take it over, uh, or do you want them to? I mean, for me personally, I just don't want anybody but Bruce and the cow. I, I just, I, I simply just don't for my own personal taste. But I understand that the idea of Batman is bigger than just Bruce at this point. So I would say probably the logical choice would have to be either Dick or Damien. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm almost with you because I, I agree. I feel like Batman is Bruce Wayne, but... I don't think Batman should die with Batman or with Bruce. Uh, so yeah, I think, I think Dick or Tim, uh, so close. The, the story that was out a few years back and I can't remember what the name of this might have even been the series that you did the voice for the radio play for. Yeah. The where, lo- lonely where, place of living. Yeah. Where Tim came back for the future and he was Batman in the future. Yes. That was pretty intriguing. That was so, really I mean, good. I, I, I could roll with that. Yep, that was yeah, that was really good, and I I really liked that story because they they explored exactly this question. They were like, oh, it has to be Tim, and here's why, and it's because Dick, you know, Dick never wanted to wear the cowl, and Jason, you know, like like they kind of gave explanation for why all the other possibilities were not the right ones, and why Tim was the only one who had to or should you know so it was it was a really interesting take on this question too so that's why i do feel like you know dick did take the the cowl for a long time and i think there's some really good stories when he is batman and then i think it makes sense that if there were you know if there were that need in gotham and bruce was not around i could see tim doing it just because it's the right thing to do yeah um, and then, have you ever been recognized in real life? Would you like to? And how would you react, Jamie? I'm a social hermit, so I mean, I don't. I, I've never been like coincidentally recognized out in public for any of this stuff that I do with podcasting or any of that. You know, we we've of course had meetups, and you know, some of the local people. Even I've I've done meetups with like Drew Keese and and people like that here and uh, the. You know, we saw Joker together a couple of years ago down in Orlando, and uh, oh God, I can't remember his name. I believe it's Chris. That sounds right. I want to say his Twitter handle was like Rinsler or something like that. Mm-hmm. Is that am I on the right track there? Anyway, I don't remember I don't his I, Twitter I, handle, but I, I I haven't been on Twitter for a minute. But anyway, you know, he he showed up and watched the movie with us. So I mean, I. I don't know that you consider that being like spotted out in public versus somebody knew where you were going to be and, and shows up and hangs out with you. But yeah, I, I haven't had any of that. I, I'm sure you have because I mean, you're world famous at this point. I'm but, world famous. <laughs> but, but I mean, if any of you ever do just happen to see me out in public and I feel standoffish or anything, please do not take it personally. I have social anxiety issues and I just don't deal well with it. So I prefer to live my life online because I don't have to have any real interaction with anybody. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> it's just, it's a weird thing. I don't do well in crowds. I don't do well in, in uncomfortable social situations. It's just not my thing. So if you see me in public, you know, way from a distance, say peace, dude. And that's, that's about the extent of the cool you'll get out of me. Mm-hmm. Cause otherwise I'm just going to clam up and be fidgety. <laughs> 
Um, so, I mean, yes, there's, there's one thing where it's like, where you intentionally meet up with someone like at Comic-Con, you know, I met Jay Oz for the first time at Comic-Con. Um, but it was one of those things where he's like, Hey, I'd love to say hi. You know, that's one thing. Um, but someone actually recognizing you, uh, out in public, that has happened to me twice. Uh, and both times I was so taken by surprise, but they were like, it was awesome. Honestly, I was so flattered that like that would happen. So the first time I was at the, uh, the magic castle in Hollywood. So the magic castle is a club slash theater slash restaurant slash bar in the Hollywood Hills. And it's for magicians. So you know, magicians are part of this club and they go perform at this club and everything. And then you can get invited to the club. Uh, and so the place I used to work at think well, like got us tickets for it. And so we went and yeah, we were like getting ready to go into the actual like main place. And the other gentleman who was with us, he's like, Hey, are you Andy? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I listened to Holy Batcast. And I was like, what? That's amazing. Uh, so he was very nice. And again, I was, I was just flattered that anyone would recognize me. I thought that was so cool. And then the second time it happened, I was at the Hollywood Bowl. And what's crazy to me is Hollywood Bowl, you know, thousands of people are there. It's and a big place. Yeah, it's huge. And I was walking like up to my seat and this other, you know, this other guy goes, hey, are you Andy? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I swear I was listening to Batcast as I drove here tonight. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, nice to meet you. You know, like it was, so those were the two times it's happened. I don't, I don't know either of those guys' names if you guys are listening. Hi. Um, but I'll tell you, like, it was so crazy to me that it happened. And then like, yeah, you, you made my night because I do this for fun. And, you know, obviously I know people listen, but it's just so crazy that, enough people listen that I could randomly run into someone uh, who recognizes me from the show at a place like the Hollywood bowl or at the magic castle. So yeah, I, I get, for me, it's just all flattering. You know, it's just, it, it meant a lot. And I just was like, Oh, I feel, <laughs> Oh my God, people listen. So I thought that was, that was really cool. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, thanks for the question, Marcio. Uh, next question is from Ulysses George. It says, Hey guys, it's been over a year since I've emailed. It's been one hell of a year for all, but we keep moving forward. Congratulations to Brendan on the baby and Andy. Congratulations on the marriage. There's a new Batman comic book called Batman, the imposter. It's the same screenplay writer who wrote with Matt Reeves. I think his name is Mattson Tomlin. The first look at the book uh, I just found it fascinating. Plus, it's almost the same universe as the Batman, but the writer is doing his own thing. It comes out October 12th. It's monthly issues, and there's only three, so give it a shot. Um, also, I watched Zack Snyder's Justice League and The Suicide Squad, and I have to say I prefer The Suicide Squad because I enjoyed it, the characters are cool and likable, and my family loved it. However, Zack Snyder's Justice League is better than Man of Steel and BVS. I enjoyed Man of Steel, but BVS made me fall asleep. I'm excited for The Flash, but I'm worried because it's the same writer as Birds of Prey. I didn't really enjoy that one, so I'm being cautious. You know, my most anticipated DC film is The Batman. We're getting a noir detective Batman film. Plus, the Gotham they shot reminds me of Batman Noel and Damned from Lee Bermejo. I'm excited. I'm probably going to see it 10 times. Anyway, here's my question. Which Vern, which universe do you want the DC universe to cross over? Mine is the Naruto universe crossover with the DC universe. It will be in, it would be interesting. Uh, plus, uh, I read a lot of fan fiction about it. Could be any crossover, uh, like maybe Bob the Builder. Uh, anyway, have a good time. Stay safe. Maybe I'll send a longer message next time. Uh, thanks, Ulysses. Okay, that's a lot. Um, lots of thoughts. I had not heard of Batman the Imposter, so I guess I'll give that a shot. Um, and then interesting thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League, The Suicide Squad, The Flash, etc., etc. Um, but here's the question. Another universe to cross over with Batman, Jamie. I mean, Marvel is the obvious choice, right? Like we've done Amalgam and we've done, you know, crossovers in the past in comics where, you know, the, these characters have met up. And it, it's always been a concept that intrigues me. But I got to tell you, the very first place my brain went 
and it, it's almost specific how I'd want it done because it, there's so many variations now. The Transformers. Huh, okay. But I, I would want it like the G1 Transformers from the old cartoon or the 86 movie, like not, not the Bay films. You know, if you guys like those, great, more power to you. I'm not crazy about them other than a little bit of the first movie, and I really did like the Bumblebee. I didn't really like any of the other stuff. Uh, Beast Wars is not my thing. You know, it's just... There's so many crazy variations of Transformers out there now, but like if I could get G1 Transformers to mesh with like Batman and Optimus Prime with Batman and Superman and Megatron with Lex Luthor and and the Joker, what you know, something along those lines to me would just be really cool because I really had a super high fondness for the Transformers when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Uh... I mean, two of the big ones are ones that have already happened in one way or another. Um, I loved the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover. That was so good. I loved it. I loved the comic versions. I loved the movie. For some reason, that just worked for me. Both of those universes, those characters, I just, I thought it worked great. So, Can you imagine like an 89 Batman Keaton with the 1990 live action Ninja Turtles? Yeah. How cool would that have been? Yeah, super cool. So... I would, you know, I I already did love that, but I would love more of that. So that's one that I would welcome. Um, one that hasn't really happened. I mean, they've flirted with it on multiple occasions, but I'd say, but they should go all in on. And this will not surprise you at all, Jamie. In fact, you probably can guess what I'm about to say. Batman and Gambit? No, but that would be amazing. <laughs> Batman goes to New Orleans, runs in Gambit. Yes. That wasn't my answer, but I'm, I'm I agree. <laughs> um, but this is what it'll make sense when I say it because again, I said they flirted with it and they've sort of done it, but like do it all in, and that is Batman and the Universal Monsters. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be pretty sweet. You know, like you've you've had you know the Batman versus Dracula, so like that kind of counts. And last year we talked about Castle of the Bat, which was the Elseworlds Frankenstein Batman sort of mix up. So, but like straight up, Batman has to go to Transylvania, and the Universal Monsters are running rampant, and it's Batman, it's the whole Bat family, and the Universal Monsters make that happen and make it a movie, and I'll watch it every Halloween. Andy catch oh what is that that's my wallet oh i figured that's what it was thank you and i'm sitting over here wondering i know we've done these marvel crossovers in the past and i haven't kept up with all of them but have they ever done a justice league in the x-men crossover oh man i don't think so i I mean can you imagine i mean Justice League versus X-Men, I mean, to an extent, I guess that would be okay, but I'm really thinking more of a Justice League teams up with X-Men to fight the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and the the uh, Legion of Doom. How freaking yeah, awesome would yeah, that be? Yeah, totally. I think, and we're testing my memory here, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think they did a Teen Titans X-Men crossover in the 80s. I, I think that's right because I think Justice League has tangled or teamed with the Avengers at yeah. one point. Yeah. But never with the X-Men. At least not to the recollection I can recall and I I vaguely recall something with Teen Titans and X-Men so I think you're you're probably spot on with that. Mm. So yeah, I mean Marvel's obviously the obvious answer so I was trying to think of something else, but there you have it. Um Good question. All right. Next message here is from Aaron Kajanto. It says, hey, I hope all is well in everyone's lives. This year, I'm participating in Scarathon, and a film series that I'm deep into at the moment is Predator, which jogged my memory of the old Batman versus Predator comic book from the 90s. And it now has me fantasizing about how good would it be if that concept was created today? Predator studying Batman, Batman trying to figure out the killings. Anyway, maybe I'm just fanboying, so let's fanboy together. Can you think of any other superhero versus monster showdowns you'd like to see? Stay beautiful, lads. Keep up the great work. Um, thanks, Aaron. That's funny. That, that that's... My answer to that is Batman and the Universal Monsters. Great. I mean, it is. Cr- I didn't even read ahead, but that is so so funny how that's so dovetailed with the last question we got. 
Listen, I've said this before, probably more than once, but on the plane ride down to Orlando two years ago, I had a bunch of stuff on DC Universe saved on my, at the time it was a Kindle. I've now switched to an iPad because Kindles have terrible connectivity issues. But anyway, um, they had a series on there. They unfortunately didn't have the Batman versus Predator, so that must have been a Dark Horse publication. Even I think so. I had, I had that... And I still have it, the actual physical copies. I had them. I lost them in the basement flood. Oh, the Great yeah. Flood. Yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't Predator versus Batman, or I probably would have still had them. But since it was Batman versus Predator, uh, they were in the B-Box, and the B-Box went bye-bye. But anyway, um, there was a series on there, and it sounds so magnificent on paper. Like, how can you screw this up? Batman and Superman versus Alien and Predator. Oh, like, these are four yeah. of my favorite yeah. things in the world. How can you put all this in one book and it sucks? <laughs> like, it sucks so bad. Oh, it was terrible. So anyway, that concept done better, sign me the F up. Oh, man. So superhero versus monster showdowns. Oh, I've seen artwork of it, but how about Superman v. Godzilla? Man, why you got to do that to me? Hmm? No, just, I'm sad. Just saying. Just saying. How about Aquaman versus the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> That's what the Lost Kingdom is. They're, they're out trying to find Nessie. Oh, my God. Sign me up. I'm going to throw my wallet. Get, let me just find it here. <laughs> uh, here you go. How about How about Batman has to go to the Arctic and he fights a Yeti. Except, and that way, you know, all those action figures over the years where it's been like, you know, Winter Frost Batman, now it can finally be in canon, so it makes more sense. I like where your head's at, but let me take this a step further. How about the Justice League put in the scenario of John Carpenter's The Thing? Oh. they've got to do battle with this creature somebody is tainted maybe several of them are tainted nobody knows who they've got to figure out who can you trust who can you not I, I like this I'm, I'm not good enough to write it or give you a hard details of what I want out of it but somebody out there is a good enough writer they can come up with some fan fiction to write this story and I'm telling you I'm into it okay yeah, all right all right here's a thought just you know just spitballing i love werewolves i think werewolves are cool as hell and scary as hell the what? problem with werewolves you don't seem to get a lot of good quality content with them i them. know i know that's why i'm writing it right now like i can count on both hands the number of werewolf movies i've seen that i really like i know they're so being cool Jack nicholson and michelle pfeiffer's wolf which we had a discussion about. And thankfully I found out I'm not the only person that loves that movie. I love that movie. It's great. Oh, it's so damn good. Um, but what about Catwoman versus werewolves? The whole like, dog versus cat. Yeah. A little animal. variation on cats and dogs and she's human, but like, you know, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I'd check it out. I'm not crazy about Catwoman as a character, but yeah, I'm, the, the concept works for me. I was me, just trying I to think. think of someone not Batman, but like, you know, that could make a little more sense. And and I want more werewolf content. So to your point. How, how about a remake of Time After Time with Booster Gold instead of H.G. Wells? Oh. Like the time machine? You ever see Time After Time? It's the one where H.G. Wells is chasing after Jack the Ripper. I don't think so, no. It's uh, 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 Malcolm McDowell is H.G. Wells, and I believe it's David Warner is Jack the Ripper. It was on sale in the discount bin. Go go in the iTunes discount bin. It was in there for four ninety nine a week ago. If it's in there, buy it. I'm sure it's something you'll like. Okay. Time After Time, it's called. All right. Anyway. Since you didn't see that movie, that concept was lost on you. But H.G. Wells built a time machine and Jack the Ripper takes the time machine and goes to like modern day New York. And then H.G. Wells has to follow Jack the Ripper to modern day New York and try and track him down and stop him from, you know, going on his killing spree there. Uh, OK, it's a pretty hip concept. Yeah. Well, you I haven't seen you, it in years, honestly. You know, we, we just missed the most obvious one. Oh, 
Michael Myers. Here we go. Here we go. Go with me on this. All right. Michael Myers versus Barbara Gordon, but Barbara Gordon in the wheelchair. So it is Batgirl slash Oracle mixed with Halloween, but also mixed with Rear Window because she could only watch from her apartment. Have you ever encountered something that you didn't know you needed in your life until you heard it? <laughs> because I just did. There you go. Wow, that sounds amazing. Yes, yes. Well, okay. I'm, 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 yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just running through shit in my head with this, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a thought. Good I just, question. I, for some reason, had an image of Barbara sitting there, like, borderline traumatized about an encounter she just had with Michael, and Michael's face appears, you know, how it slowly fades in from that light? Mm-hmm. And then slowly fading in behind Michael as Batman. Oh, nice. <laughs> ah. That'll oh, keep me right. right. Fun question for, for spooky season. All right, we got one more email here. This is from Todd Johnson. It says, hey, guys, I absolutely love the show. Thank you for all that you do. This question is for Andy. I'm a huge horror fan. And all things Batman and DC and a movie freak just like you guys. One thing I've never gotten into is movie scores. I feel like I'm missing something very cool. So I know this is your wheelhouse. I want to ask you, what's your favorite horror score? And what are your top three ever in all genres? Of course, I'd love to hear the all the guys lists if they have one. Thanks for helping me get started. Todd Johnson. Oh, Todd. How much Boy, time do you got? this is a conversation got? and a half here, boys. This, this could be an episode. How much time you got? Wow. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, somebody suggested an episode like this for another show. I'm just saying. I know. I know. If we could, if we can get some schedules. Um, favorite horror movie score of all time is just mentioned John Carpenter's Halloween. Echoed. Um, but although I, I want to give shout out to. Halloween 2. Okay. Halloween 3. Halloween 2018. Because, wow. I mean, any any Halloween score that Carpenter was involved in is is primo yeah. stuff. Yeah. It really is. I agree. And in so many ways, it just kind of updates each time. You know, Halloween 3 is really kind of its own thing. But 1, 2, and 18 are really kind of like just evolutions of similar to same music. Mm-hmm. But it's all still really good. Yeah. No, agreed. Uh, yeah, I just listened to the Halloween 2018 score the other day, because obvious. Um, and yeah, it's so good. It's so good. Um, so a couple other horror scores I would suggest. I'm trying to mix it up. Um, Sleepy Hollow by Danny Elfman is wonderful. Excellent. Wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's a great one. Um, and because <laughs> I'm always going to bring this one up, Dead Silence. Oh, that's so good. The score is so good by Charlie Clauser. It's so good. The movie's so good. good. The score's great, yep. man. That that's that's coming up after my Insidious watch, in fact. So, yeah. yeah. So there's there's three. I, I'm not going to say they're my top three because I, I would need a whole week to determine what I truly believe are my top three. But uh, those are three, three very different choices, but uh, will all serve you well this time of year. And I stand behind them. So check those out. Certainly. Um, so other great movie scores uh, for superhero movie scores, Batman, uh, 1989, Danny Elfman, obviously, John Williams, <laughs> Superman, the movie, uh, amazing. And oh, I'm going to go to the other side of the street. Alan Silvestri, Captain America, the first Avenger. Oh, that's a great score. Yeah. Yeah. All, all those are great. But I mean, as far, obviously, Williams and Elfman, I mean, they, they get their due props. Sylvester doesn't get enough for that first Avenger score because it's freaking outstanding. I know, I know. So and I, yeah, I mean, I wanted to. I mean, there is the reason and, I put and all his three Avengers of those together. Score is also outstanding too. Oh, like without a doubt. Yep. Uh, I'll also, just throw a bonus: the Rocketeer, James Horner. Mm, that's a good one. Ah, yeah. oh, so good. It's beautiful. Um, I love how much love that movie's been getting in recent years. Yeah, yeah. And same I still, here. I still owe you a drink for introducing me to that movie ten years ago. Well, good. I'll take it. Um, 
other great movie scores. I mean, I, every genre, that's a that's a whole homework assignment. But uh, you mentioned it earlier, Jamie. It's another one of my favorite movie scores of all time, Hoosiers. That's a Jerry Goldsmith score. Okay. Um, the score for Twister, Mark Mancina. Good one. Terrific. Uh, absolutely swear by it. I think it's it's best of the best. Oh, I want to give you Hans Zimmer, but where do I even start with Hans oh, Zimmer? Lord, have Holy mercy. shit. That's, um, that's an episode all to itself right there. Yeah, I mean, all... Williams, the, Zimmer, I mean, these yeah, guys are... Yeah, Elfman, the, the, these guys, you could just do whole episodes on just their work. Yeah, so for Zimmer, I would say... I would say Man of Steel is excellent. Is a masterpiece. Um, also, all of his pirate scores are amazing. But if I would pick just one, honestly, I'd pick At World's End, the third pirate score. Really? Yeah. I mean, they're all great, and they all overlap. So it's you know it's hard to pick. But man, the yeah, At World's End. His Lone Ranger score. He did the oh, Lone Ranger, right? Yes, the Lone yeah, Ranger yeah. score is amazing. So good. Um, oh, man. James Newton Howard, uh, Treasure Planet. Tough to, go, tough to go wrong with him. Yeah, Treasure Planet. Batman Begins, Hans Zimmer and James Newton Howard. The Batman Begins score. Uh, honestly, the whole Dark Knight trilogy scores, all three of them. Freaking great. Um, I'm, I'm falling back to Batman, but sorry. It's, it's going to happen. So, uh, that's. I mean, that's. there's a bunch. <laughs> I, I mean, like, every genre, again, it's, it's a little trickier. Oh. If we're, if we're going back to superheroes, do you know whose score is amazing? Is the first Thor score from uh, Patrick Doyle. It's a really good I one, too. I can't place it. I mean, I, I don't have anything against it. I just, well, it's well, not one that I ever just sat down and listened to it independent of the film. Yeah, one of these days when you, you know, when you're looking for something to revisit, put on that first Thor score. It's really good. Huh. I, I don't know why I've never listened to that one, because I guess... Cap and Avengers are the only ones I ever really listened to out of the Marvel stuff. Yeah. No disrespect to any of the ones. They're just the only ones that really stood out to me for any reason. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there you go. There's a, there's a bunch. I mean, then it, Star Wars, come on. Like, it's so good. Even uh, the bad Star Wars movies have great scores. Yes, and, yes. And I say bad yes. Star Wars movies with air quotes because there's only one that I don't really... I mean, get into it. and, and, even and the music of that one's good. We're living in DC land. So, uh, the scores for both wonder woman and Aquaman by Rupert Gregson Williams, both Excellent. of those, both, both of those. Yes. So good. Oh, Oh, Daft Punk Tron legacy. Hello, boy. That is one of my all time legendary favorites right there. I knew you'd agree. And I swear yeah. to you, you and I are the only ones that like jam that stuff. Oh, it's so, I oh, love man. that score so much love that score if you didn't say it i was about to yeah um yeah also like that's that's a top 10 all time for me oh and as easily. far as actual like played frequently it's probably closer to top five yeah and even the remix album for it's good mm-hmm. not as good but good yep yep agreed so Hor- horror scores uh I'm going to trip up on some names here. You can probably help me out. Uh, I think it's Elmer Bernstein did the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh God, let Is me check. Right? I don't. I don't think he did the the first, but I could be wrong. Uh, da, 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 da. maybe it's Charles Bernstein. It's that makes like that, that sounds better. <laughs> that sounds that sounds more. Uh, I'm bad with remembering anybody's name, so forgive me about this. No, you're fine. But anyway, the the original Nightmare on Elm Street score, very eerie, very moody, very seasonal. Charles Bernstein, you're you're right. Okay, so that's in constant rotation in my playlist because there's just so much eerie creepiness going on with that. And, you know, it's probably a cliche answer because it's, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street's a very recognized popular film. But trust me when I tell you this score, independent of the film, works. Yeah. Like... My do- I, again, I mentioned my daughters were born. My, their actual birthday is Halloween. They were born October 31st. And when they have their, their Halloween parties every year, which, you know, that's their birthday party, uh, I will always have a playlist going. And that, that and Halloween and so many others are part of that playlist. And the kids are always commenting about how much they love the music that I'm playing for those parties. So mm-hmm. there's that. Uh, it follows done by disaster piece. Mm-hmm. Andy and I, I know both are big fans of that one. That's another one. It's very moody. It's eerie. It's creepy. It's, it's unusual, 
but in the best possible way. It's very unique. You will never confuse it with any other things. Like so, sometimes I guess, you know, a score can maybe blend together and you'll confuse it with something else. I promise you the it follow score, you will never confuse for anything else that you ever hear. It's, it's incredible. And I wish disaster piece and Daft Punk both did more score work. Yeah. Um, um, one that I've introduced quite a few people to, uh, and it's really good is, uh, the score to the Fright Night remake. I was, oh, dude, I swear to God, that was going to be one I was going to mention. Raman Jawadi, that is a great score. Yeah, it's I amazing. Love the movie. I think the movie is superior to the original in every way it could possibly be. But independent of that, the score is such a blast and so wonderfully themed for Halloween. Oh, it's it's so good. The, the, the main theme, it's awesome because it's very modern, but he brings in an old school pipe organ. And yeah. the combination of the pipe organ with like just sort of the contemporary music works so well together. And when you hear it, you go, oh, this is a vampire movie. It was brilliant. Jawadi's a he's great. I mean, he he did the music for Game of Thrones for anybody out there wondering about his other work. And he did a great job with that. Uh, he does, I believe, Westworld on HBO mm-hmm. also. And uh, there's something else he did recently that I can't place. Son of a biscuit. Anyway, I, I, I'm a big fan of that guy's work. He, he's a, I feel like he player. might have done one or two of the Harry Potters as well maybe but i could have yeah i could be dude the, i'm telling you that music in those first couple of harry potter movies that williams did mm, yeah. i love it like i can't say i love a lot of stuff out of harry potter but that music in those first couple of movies is definitely at the top of the list oh god scores scores stuff that i wish <laughs> dude i mean other than the ones that andy mentioned you know the superhero stuff he and i are pretty much all on the same page with um you know, anything by John Carpenter, you, you can't go wrong with him. Like lately I've been listening that there, there's a, I use iTunes, uh, Apple music. I, I, I have an Apple music subscription, so I don't really buy albums anymore. I just listen to what's on there. And there's a combo album. That's John Carpenter's assault on precinct 13 and dark star, which the dark star score is, eh, but assault on precinct 13. There's some really good stuff going on in there. Uh, escape from New York and escape from LA Say what you will about Escape from L.A. Personally, I dig that movie a lot, but the score is wonderful for that film. And there's one track on there called, I think it's Snake's Jacket or Snake's Uniform. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite pieces of music of all time. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the opening title to Escape from L.A. is like so good because it's that same Escape from New York theme, but like updated. Oh, it's Yeah, it's like what I was talking about with the evolution of the Halloween music. This one kind of takes the Escape from New York music and and evolves it into you know, something 16 years later. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Is it James Horner that did the alien score? Aliens, not alien. Aliens. Aliens. Yep. I love that score. It's it. You can listen to that because it's great, or you can listen to it for Scarathon either way, because it, it fits both molds. And he also did one of my favorite scores of all time. And I listened to this thing, probably as much or more than any other movie score that I listened to. And I saved this one for last specifically for this reason, Star Trek to the wrath of Khan. Mm. I am not a Trek guy. I, I don't hock the Trek. I'm, I'm a star Wars guy by birth and I have been for my whole life. There's things that I like about Trek, but as a whole, I'm just, I'm not a Trek guy. Star Trek to the wrath of Khan is brilliant on the score front to back. All right. And I'm sure there's dozens of others that I'm not giving credit to that I should, but that's where I'm at. Yeah. <laughs> other, otherwise we're in like three whole episodes worth of this shit. Andy and I kind of have a passion for this. So you, you hit a hot button. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. You asked, there's a bunch. And again, to bring it really back, uh, to, uh, to Batman again, the score for the Dark Knight returns animated is really good too. Oh, Chris, Oh, what? young. Is it Chris young? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Great work on that. That's a really good score too. Yeah. Um, all right. There you go. That's it. We're done. Oh, uh, I got to I got a shot. I out. said we're done. No, no. Batman oh. mask of the phantasm. Yeah. Shirley Walker. All right. Now we're done. Shirley Walker. Oh, and Howard Shore, Lord of the Rings. Oh shit. How did I forget that? I know. 
Curse my eyes. Oh, Fellowship. The score for Fellowship. Fellowship? Music, oh, The dude. scene where they're walking up across that one point and each of them kind of gets their own close-up as they're walking yeah. by. And the music wells up in that moment. My yeah. God, that makes every hair on my body stand straight up. Oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> All right, great. So, well, yeah, when are we when are we starting this score podcast? I know, I know. Uh, cool. Well, there you go. That is it for our messages. Uh, so thank you guys for writing in. Always good to hear from you. Always good for you guys to give us uh, things to discuss, including movie scores. So uh, we can't get enough. Anyway, uh, if you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, you can send that to Holy Backcast at rf4rm.com. But that's it. That's it for this episode. We're going to be back after DC Fandom, and we're going to talk all about what we see there. Let's see how our predictions play out. Fingers crossed for more, more good stuff. We can't wait for it. Um, well, but you know, I'm 100 percent spot on every time. I, you, I mean, you, Nostradamus is jealous is eerily, of you. My track record is eerily accurate. Yeah, it's always so. Jamie, thanks for making the time on this. Uh, what is it? Thursday? Yeah, on this Thursday evening. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Cool. Happy, happy fall, happy autumn, happy pumpkin, happy scare, happy all good things that come with this season to everybody out there. All right, thank you. You as well. So always good to have you back, and I hope that you can join us for our post fandom recap. Um, but that's it. Thank you guys who are listening. Thank you for downloading the show. Please do subscribe so you never miss an episode. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And as Michael Keaton's Batman says, I want you to tell all your friends about me. Maybe he'll say it again. Uh, visit HolyBatCast.com and find Holy Batcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. Again, if you've got something for the Wayne Manor mailbox, that email address is HolyBatCast at RF4RM.com. So until next time, on behalf of Jamie and Brendan, who didn't join us this time, uh, I've been Andy. This has been Holy Batcast, and we'll see you next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Holy Batcast is not affiliated with Warner Brothers or DC Entertainment. The views and opinions shared by the participants are theirs and theirs alone and do not represent the companies or organizations they happen to work for. DC fans, are you ready? The DC Universe is about to change. DC Fandom is coming. One day where everything DC comes alive. The epic global event. That will take you on a journey. Beyond your wildest expectations. Nothing compares to this. Featuring the biggest stars. The biggest titles. The biggest reveals. What the... Join me. Join Join me. me. Join me. At DC Fandom 2021. It's going to blow people's heads off. One day. One show. For you. The fans. Save the date. You won't want to miss it. DC Fandom. Join us live October 16th. Streaming free on DCFandom.com. And be the first to see the new trailer.